find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get nerdy. It's the awesome cast from Pittsburgh, PA in the Mayhem Studios. I'm Mike Sorg, at Sorgatron on the Twitter. MikeSorg.com gets you all the places where I'm at. Uh, AwesomeCast.net with me. Uh, back in his home studio. No, studio? I don't know. You got a couch back there, it looks like. I mean, you got a lot going on. Yeah, that's, that's for when I need to. That's my thinking spot when I'm. And that's also my junk storage spot when I dump out of Sometimes bag. I think on top of my junk storage. <laughs> Sometimes I just cover myself in my junk storage and it gives me good thoughts. Um, it's Sean Chichill is joining us at Chill on the Twitter. If you want to talk to him about his junk storage uh, uh, schemes, uh, he's over there. It's, it's not a pyramid scheme. It's not a pyramid scheme. It's a junk scheme. Um, I've been doing kind of those videos. Um, anyways, uh, that's a whole other thing. Uh, hey, it's it's the Awesome Cast 223. Uh, we're here live every Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time at live.sorgatronmedia.com. We got a few people in there. That I'm sure we'll correct all of our ales or, or complain about how much we're talking about Apple. Um, but no, we got something for them, too, this this week. Uh, we're also on Twitter at Awesome Cast. We're our Awesome Cast on the Google Plus and the Facebook you can follow us or like us there and uh like i said all everything all our all our stuff and links to where you can subscribe to us is at awesomecast.net email us awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com and you can again subscribe to us like us please comment share it with your friends itunes youtube stitcher spreaker and iheart radio uh so with that we'd like to start with our awesome thing of the week let me do mine chilla because yours i think is gonna be most of the show um <laughs> Now, we mentioned last week, I talked about the Verizon Innovation event, right, Chilla? Um, you know, pretty cool thing that they're doing there. It's kind of an incubator of new technology. They help certain technologies get out into the market. They're going to be pretty much turning their stuff into an Apple store. It's going to be great for Verizon, right? Um, they had little gift bags for us little bloggers, so full disclosure there. I got this as a freebie. Um <laughs> and people are yelling in the chat room already. Uh, but no, I got this little speaker. It's a Bluetooth speaker. Um, I don't know if I've talked about, I have a 10 year old vehicle and it doesn't have any sort of input. And I've kind of given up on the uh, radio receivers. Uh, they've just, it's just too much to deal with when I just want to get in the car, hit play on my phone, maybe click something that it starts working on my radio and, and go, right? Um, mm -hmm. well, this is the, what I had to pull it up here. This is the ultimate ears mini boom. If you guys can see it here on the video. Uh, so I, I did, uh, Verizon was very nice to leave the price tag on. <laughs> so okay. it was kind of like, Oh, cool guy speaker or whatever. You know, it's probably a crappy speaker. I don't know. Probably really tinny and stuff, you know? Um, then I looked at it. I was like, Hey, that's $99. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was like, okay, let's let's see what we can do with this. So first thing, uh, like I said, in my car, I've been using. Um, we got this little speaker guy, uh, a South Park figure. Stan uh, has been accompanying me in my car, and he just you know headphone jack into him, and he's a little bit of a bigger speaker, and I stick him in a cup holder so it resonates out a little bit, and that's how I listen to my podcast as I travel to 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 my workplaces, right? um mm -hmm. so this guy came along it's a bluetooth speaker it's not very big at all there it is it's hiding my head a little bit you know um for you guys on 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 audio um it's jeez it's uh about the width and size of my mouse i guess uh, it, looks, it, look, it would look like if you stacked five phones on top of each other okay i can see that okay i can see that sure that, that, to me, that's about the size for, so, for, for you audio people out there. Yeah. So, so um, it, like I said, it's a Bluetooth speaker. Uh, you you have to uh, uh, to stick it to your device. You actually have to get their app, which is buried somewhere on my phone. Like, I don't think you have to go back and do anything again with it. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Um, 
so but but you do need to do that so you can get kind of the settings on it and everything and, and there's there's a couple things that looks like you can tinker with uh when you get that software in there uh but you really just kind of click it on it, it's got on the back you got your power it actually does have a headphone jack so i'm not sure if that's an in or out so what can i just plug this right into something and it's not bluetooth. what's that it's not yeah it's not bluetooth it's not, and then i have a speaker yeah, most, most of the speakers like Jambox or jbl or what's the motorola i think has one most of those do have the the pass through for mm -hmm. for non because for the longest time right the bluetooth they did you could do bluetooth audio but it was like one channel put together it wasn't left and right um and it wasn't until they had like the a2dp and, and multi home device that made it a lot easier to to actually link to those types of devices that the pass through just made a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. It's uh, but it's pretty easy. Once you get everything synced up and get that figured out, you click it on, you get a little chime. Oh, little cord. Okay. And then I uh, give it a second and it pops on to, you hear that little chime. And it's on my phone, and I already have uh, Pandora on, ready to play. And it's a filling audio. Mm -hmm. Like you're saying, like this sounds pretty good. We'll put a vice away so YouTube doesn't pull us anymore. Um, and, you know, a little light on the back, like so you you charge it. Now this I have never noticed before. When I uh, when I uh, uh, Bluetooth this, it actually has a battery indicator by the Bluetooth. Yeah, most of the newer devices will feed back their their battery. Mm -hmm. Like I have, a, I have a couple Bluetooth headsets that do that as well. So uh, it actually comes in very handy. The only thing is, is no one you have to know obviously the, what the total hour of battery life your device is. Because if your device gets an average of let's just say ten hours, well fifty percent, you have five hours left. If your device gets three hours, well you have an hour and a half left. Mm -hmm. So it can get kind of confusing with the battery bar. I wish there was a way, and, and I think Jawbone does a really nice job of it. If you tap the headset, it'll actually say X amount of hours remaining. Now, and also, it seems to last pretty well, at least when it's not being used. Um, this was, it must go on standby or something, because this was left on, and I probably haven't been in the car since uh, Friday. And uh, yeah, it's kicked on. It's playing fine here. I don't think I have it plugged it in in there. So um, go to the chime when it, when it shuts off. Let you know. So I like it gives you enough. And, and it's also on the top. Like there are there's a Bluetooth button, so you can do you know your sync action. I think it is, or at least like looking for it. You know, uh, mm -hmm. and you have a giant you know plus and minus for volume. Uh, so it's nice, like, if you have this, and you just kind of pop it. Like, I want to, what I want to do is just, like, strap this to my ceiling. You know, like, in the middle of the car, so it kind of fills the entire yeah. car. But but typically, it's like, I get in the car, I put my phone on the holder, plug it into the power, uh, kick this on, start, you know, say, you know, hey, Siri, open Pandora. Uh, and it does it, in, you know, by the time I've kicked this on, it's starting to play, and I'm ready to go. So... Um, so, so kind of nice as an alternative, you know, and again, I'm like tossing in the seat beside me and it just mm -hmm. kind of fills the car with sound. Um, do, you, do you have an area in your dash? Maybe you could put it in. I, you know, I, I have like a little compartment kind of like under the radio. I should just take out the radio cause it's not being used. Oh, there you go. <laughs> it's be like speaker right here. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it would be nice. I, I wonder maybe this is a feature if I, if I dived into it, or maybe there's something else that does this. What can I get like multiple ones of these? You know, like, and just do it that way. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's like some kind no, of. No, I think that's, that's Sonos is. Maybe Sonos does that kind of thing. Yeah, so, where you like, can link them all together. I don't think most most other other companies don't offer that that cool. Mm -hmm. Get one and then get another one later, and you can you can join them together and, and things of that nature. Awesome. So uh, if you if you want to find out more about this again, it looked like they retailed for about ninety nine dollars. Uh, it's the Ultimate Ears Mini Boom. 
you can actually uh, take a look at it over at ultimateears.com. We'll have a link over at awesomecast.net if you're interested in this. Uh, we'll have an Amazon link, uh, so hopefully if you do want to get one, uh, you can help out the show while you're at it, too. And while you're at it, there's also a bunch of other links of stuff that we've recommended in the past uh, as awesome things of the week. A lot of gadget chill has brought, brought on. The, the battery pack that I took with me uh, to the mosh pit in uh, at the Gathering of the Juggalos is, is on there as well. I actually did have a recommendation for that. Like somebody, somebody was asking me about uh, any kind of batteries uh, just a little bit ago. Um, so, uh, <laughs> my bro, what, what's that? What's the charge port on that? Is it standard mini? Oh, yeah, it's a. Uh, it is a mini on there. So like like same thing that's on same thing that's on my Nexus tablet. So, okay. um, my brother is in the chat room. He says he sold one of these to someone who wanted a speaker for his bicycle. We tested it out after purchase and it sounded great. It is pretty awesome. So there you go. Um, and he works over at, uh, in electronics at a Walmart. So, um, so I apparently get one over there as well. So, um, awesome. So now what do you got? Shilla, uh, something googly. So, so I have a laundry list. You and do. I'm just going to generalize my awesome thing of the week with one word, Google. I know Chachi has already left the chat room because he probably figures that we're now going to switch to the Apple show. Today, it's going to be the Google show because Google in the last week has done nothing but release update after update after device after OS update after connected device update um to to give a quick brief overview uh last week we talked about inbox which is open for invite only right now um this week we have seen so far and it's only tuesday um lollipop a new calendar update a new gmail app um the nexus player that they released a, a tablet the nine inch tablet that they released Samsung has a pretty cool looking phone coming out, and today they talked about a Nest update. Wow. So getting back to the beginning in Lollipop, and, and I included a, a link from, from Engagenet on, on the on the show notes because I thought I, I read I was trying to find as much information as I could because I didn't I, I didn't know anyone that was running kind of like a, a rooted version or a preview release or anything of that nature. Um, I thought they did the best job of completely overviewing everything um, that was in Lollipop and Android 5.0, um, as well as what I've seen. Because Android is actually getting a little heavier on the animation side, mm -hmm. most sites that you're seeing reviewing this are actually using like animated GIFs to show a lot of the different pieces, especially when it comes to um, material design and the user and a lot of the user interface. Um, so, so because of the animations, a lot of a lot of different um, tech news sites are are hitting us up with with to show us the animations. Um, obviously, being said, material design um, is Google's new way of of conveying motion and and layering. In, the, in their UI, it also helps create a consistent UI across all device interfaces. So when you go from smaller phone to larger tablet to browser on a, on a, a laptop or even a desktop screen, that keeps that consistent user interface. Um, they do that. It, it is rather flat, but they do continue the card idea. Um, as well as using uh, some minor shading and layering um, to kind of create, I don't want to say a 3D effect, but to help distinguish the areas that you may want to tap on or, or the active area of a screen. Um, looking at the UI, I didn't notice any huge, huge changes with the UI, except for one thing that stuck out to me. Um, they have moved to PlayStation buttons, I guess. Um, okay. When you, when you're, if you're familiar with Android on your Nexus tablet or on any of your Android devices today, usually you have those three soft buttons at the bottom of most screens that have like oh the arrow that kind of goes backwards. Yeah. 
um, that kind of loops around backwards. You have the little house. It looks like a, a Monopoly house piece from the old wooden days of Monopoly. Um, and then you have two squares kind of overlaid on each other to kind of get you into like the apps that are running switch around type thing. They can't tell um, you what's going to happen though to me, you know, like one's yeah. the home button and one's like the, you know, kind of reflects what's going to happen. Cause it's the, um, uh, the, the two squares like pops up. Here's all my apps. Okay. I only have one app open apparently. Um, but, but yeah, I'm seeing this because I'm looking. At, I'm looking at this one screen. And yeah, it's it's just like here's a triangle that's kind of pointing back. Here's a circle. Here's a square. Uh, yep. figure it out. I don't know. I think I, it, maybe it's like uh, Hollywood squares. I feel like that's not good for that. new users at all. Yeah, yeah. I thought this. I to a new user, maybe it wouldn't be as big of a deal because you're learning fresh. Um, or maybe it will be a big deal. Um. For existing, I thought existing users would have, maybe just because where they're placed, it's the same placement. Mm -hmm. I, I just thought it was interesting. I, I, I do, don't get me wrong, I, it does remind me of a PlayStation controller. I do like it. Um, I just thought it was an interesting way. That would not be the first thing that I would have picked to, to, to redesign was the main major navigation buttons. But, but like I said, I do like them. Um, the notifications are, are kind of, or I think they call it overview. Um, they're, they're kind of gives you an overlay and kind of grays out the back of the screen. Whereas some of the devices primarily that I've seen, it's just a, it's just a drop down that comes down. Um, they do have kind of their, their, uh, what do they call it? I don't see it in here where, where you can kind of turn on Bluetooth, turn on or off Bluetooth. Like the toggle button. Yeah, things of that nature. That to me that looks a lot cleaner. And they also put um, wording below it that help explain what it is. Um, Gmail's redo mimicking a lot of like that Google Plus look. I thought looked great. Um, they did a lot with their setup procedures for adding accounts. And this is and the actual of, app for Android, right? What's that? This is the actual Gmail app for Android, right? Yeah, correct. Um, looking and and when you set up, you can now the the Gmail app for Android now doesn't just allow you to add Gmail accounts. It actually allows you to add Yahoo and Exchange and and other email companies or cloud hosted email. So also, if you you have the ability to active sync in your enterprise. Um, and in our Microsoft shop, same type of thing. Um, looking through, what else did they talk about? Um, they do have kind of a of a priority session, and where you can kind of, I don't I don't know what it's actually called. Do not disturb on iOS. Um, they kind of have a do not disturb feature, where you can kind of set it for an hour or indefinitely. Um, and you can set it for different times on different days. Um, they do have some performance enhancements where they you can run enhanced Google services where it has full hot word and interaction um, capabilities or basic Google recognition where it's simple speech to text, um, things of that nature. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so they seem to be kind of allowing you with a battery saver mode, which was great. Um, security, they, they kind of... They, their big thing this time is they're they're re revamping their security model, uh, smart lock, which allows you to use a Bluetooth device um, to lock or unlock the device. Uh, it's the first time in a while I think we've seen since uh, I think it was Honeycomb, a later version of Honeycomb that trusted face where it actually uses your your face to unlock the device. Um, for photographers, they added. Uh, default raw image support. Um, they also, one of the things that I hear a lot of Samsung users brag about is the audio support their device has with their USB um, peripherals. So they actually added a lot of that USB audio support into the devices to support microphones, speakers, preamps, mixers, etc. A lot of that, like I said, wasn't natively built in the KitKat, but a lot of the, the third parties added that in later. Um, there is a hidden Flappy Bird clone 
<laughs> nice. <laughs> it's their Easter egg with with the lollipops, and you. I think it's like a little Android guy you can kind of hop through in there. Um, the one thing that I didn't see this talk about was the um, encryption by def or in, uh, encryption at rest. I'm interested to see how that what effect that has on devices. Um, they also kind of expanded their multi-user capabilities, not just on the tablet, but to the phones. Um, it's interesting because you can create multiple users on the device, log yourself out, log someone else in. That user can have separate apps. They can have the same app, but it's in a different user. I think it, I think it creates a really nice effect if you have a shared tablet, especially at home. Um, so I'm excited to see this. I've actually been taking my Nexus 7 and um, pretty much every hour tapping check now. Um, <laughs> they, they claimed, so it, so it launched on the, the, the Nexus 9-inch tablet. Um, oh, 719, my system's still off the date, drat. Um, but it did launch on the new tablet that, it, that uh, shipped yesterday. And then it's supposed to be rolling out to the Nexus line relatively soon. So I'm, I'm definitely excited for that. Um, keeping in the in the Google world, there's a new calendar and new Gmail app. As I said, the Gmail app isn't tied to Lollipop, so people today can get the Gmail app and they update the calendar. Calendar kind of reminds me of a more nowish calendar. It reminds me definitely of Google now. Um, when you look at especially like the day, the day view. Um, it kind of uses that card theory. I thought that was it. Was it was pretty darn cool looking. It looks a lot like Inbox to me. Yeah. Well, and the, the other thing that I, I heard rumblings of was the web was getting revamped. So I'm guessing everybody, everything's going to kind of go to Inbox. Some of that, that needs inbox. it. That that calendar. Oof. I, I've actually swapped to uh, Sunrise instead of the calendar. Um, well, I mean, I'm using. I mean, Google Calendar is where everything's stored, but Sunrise mm -hmm. is kind of my front end for it um and it also brings in all the facebook stuff uh when i get invites so like that all kind of gets managed in one place so it, it's kind of nice um but mostly just because i needed just a better front end for dealing with the calendar than the way like especially because i never really had a calendar management on my laptop mm. so i snagged that put on my laptop it works on the android works on the phone and everything kind of just makes more sense. Um, and it's nice because uh, I do my invites through it. It attaches everybody. So when I pull up on sunrise here, it'll, it'll say, you know, Oh, Hey, you know, such and such is going and I'll see a face of somebody. So it's a nice at a glance kind of thing going on. Um, is it, you, you were saying it works on Android. It works on your, your iPhone. Mm -hmm. Is there a Mac client or how does that work? There is a Mac client. There, there is a Mac client. It is in the. Uh, I don't have my Mac set up to to display here, uh, but I believe it is in the App Store. So cool. I'll have to check that out. That sounds like a nice. So app. it's called Sunrise. If you want to check it out, uh, but it, like I said, it interfaces pretty well with with Google Calendar. I brought in all my calendars. Uh, no, no big problem there. Uh, so they, just so you know, they are working on this calendar for iOS as well. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Yeah. It, 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 you know, if if there's a nice, you know, Google Calendar that 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 works that plays ball on both both devices. I'm in. You know, I, I have no problem with that. I'm not. Uh, but Sunrise has been a nice spot so far. Um, it's a gorgeous calendar app made for Google Calendar, designed with love. Hmm. It's free, so why not? Uh, yeah, why not? Check it out. I'll, I'll definitely try that out. Um. And some of the other things that, that Google had in the, in the first two days of the week, um, launch of the Nexus player. Um, it's getting the typical... You mean the Google. Nexus game console? I well, And it's interesting, too, because... So, again, I was... A, a, there, there didn't seem to be a ton of articles on this product, so, again, <laughs> I went back to the Facebook. There's all Gashman. these pictures. There's all these pictures of it, and it's all just, like, different configurations of... The player when i was surprised like they seemed very upset that with the fact that it didn't have an ethernet port eh. and i'm like who wants i mean look at it it's, it's it's a little it's a little bit bigger than a hockey puck i mean yeah. i don't want this 
I don't, I don't want it to have to run 18 wires to it. So I'd rather what have what is it? It's got some double sided tape and let me stick it to the back it, of the TV. It's got power, USB, and HDMI. I think it's all mm-hmm. the cords you need. I mean, yeah, anything like that, you're not running a cord for. This is something you're hiding somewhere. Um, the, the thing that I liked is is that it has the the voice search built into the remote. Nice. Which I think is pretty darn impressive. It did say the remote felt a little chintzy, I think was the word that he used. Um, I'm actually interested in this device. Um, as, as we spoke in the past, about, I, I want something with an interface where I don't necessarily always have to have a phone necessarily to interface with it to then cast. Um, the, the, the gamepad is, I think, extra. It is. Yeah, it's like 40 bucks. 40 bucks. So I and uh, supposedly I guess the so the fire stick's kind of the same way like I can get a, a controller for that too, right? Yes, and but you'll be have a limited number. Yeah, it's not going to be like the crazy awesome games that 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 you have on the the actual Fire TV. So we, and this device is coming I think shipping with a quad core processor. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's, there's, I mean it's 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 not your $35 dongle. And, you know, there's just going to be a, oh, let's just turn into a game emulator. Yeah, that'd so, be nice, too. But actually, we got a story well, about that later. That's actually what I did with one of my Android tablets. Really? I, yeah, I, I got a bunch of game emulators for it. It runs them pretty well. You know what? I, you, we have you, we have these two iPads. Maybe I should just, just go ahead and jailbreak the one, toss a bunch of emulators on it, and just be like, this is what this thing does. Because it's plenty well, of power to do X. Well, yeah, because I'm... I'm also, you can, at least on the Android device, you can hook up a Wiimote. Mm-hmm. So I'm using a Wii room, a Wiimote to, to play old school Turbo Kravik 16 games. Nice. So, yeah. The, the thing that I liked, in the, and the one thing that was brought up, I don't know if it was necessarily in this, this article, but the Nexus player will, has a lot more codec support than the Fire hardware whether it be the stick or the fire tv which to me is bigger a bigger deal for me because i have an audio collection that i've been maintaining for i don't know geez literally 20 years probably now Mm -hmm. um, as well as a rather large video collection that's spread into multiple formats Um, so having ways of playing Older formats increases the the media library that I can play on on a device. So I don't know. I'm I'm really thinking about this. It's it's at that hundred dollar price point where I feel like if it's if 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 I end up throwing it on a TV in a random room for when people are over, it could even serve a purpose there. The one thing that did surprise me is that apps have to be written or updated to be compatible with this device um, for UI purposes. And things like HBO to go do not work yet. That's... You still have you still have to cast them from another device. That's weird. which is the one thing that's keeping me from this device. Wow. And and and, um, and uh HBO has been kind of notoriously slow for these kinds of things. Still don't have it on my Xbox One. Mm-hmm. Still sad. Like I'm, I'm waiting for like why isn't WWE Network on Chromecast? You know, like it, it, it seems like a no-brainer. It's like here's all the, all these. Hell, at, at this point, because there is like the Chromecast or Google Cast, I guess they're calling it now, um, is available on so many. Like I think you can do that on on Roku now. Is that right? Yes, I think you can. But they're saying radio, audio, Spotify, and HBO to go are, are major ones missing. Mm-hmm. And I can't imagine they're going to leave those off for very long. Yeah. Yeah. And they do have things like Netflix. Obviously, they have all the Google platforms. Um, Songs is there, YouTube. Uh, I mean, it to me, it just... With, that with, and with the voice search, to me, it makes it a no-brainer. Um, I'm interested to see what the Plex integration is like, which is what I'm thinking I may move a portion of my movie library to. Okay. Okay. What else do I have on the on the Google list? I love this. Um, oh, the, you got the Samsung curved uh, display phone. I, I didn't realize this hadn't come out yet. 
Yeah, it's launched on November 14th um, in the U.S. I'm interested. I want to actually just go to the store and see see this device in action. It it kind of has. It looks like it has a stylus, much like the Note. Mm -hmm. um, but the one side of the screen is actually like beveled, almost like a piece of quarter round, like you put on your between the floor and the wall. And it actually allows for a user interface. So from the home screen, obviously, you can have some icons on there that, that give you quick links to different apps like your camera or your browser, or mail, contacts, things of that nature. So it's going to move that icon off your home screen, right, and potentially give you additional icon space for the quick launching of apps. But I'm interested to see how other people start to use this for menuing. So is could this potentially spawn an interesting user interface in a multitude of apps that would be tailored to this single device? I think what's going to drive that is how well the device sells. Uh, yeah, it's a, I mean, that's kind of like the Samsung, we're going to have our own apps philosophy too, isn't it? Yeah, which I'm interested to hear because I read a blurb that I don't have a lot of information on, but the blurb was around Google not supporting samsung knox which is their security containerization mm, yeah. which is big for government and, and financial institutions and whatnot for apps um which makes me believe that google has something of their own up their sleeve but it, it, i'm interested to see how what the adoption rate is and how many people obviously samsung has a lot of the user population i'm interested to see how they can play on this piece of user interface and user experience. Hmm. I mean to me it to me it just makes the device that much cooler. Think about it, think about you if you move you move the volume up and down to that bar or you move the I'm trying to think what else you use all your sub menus for Twitter. Like I could just see it being very useful to give you more screen real estate on the main screen. People are going to be, have to be a little more creative with it too. So. Yeah. Hmm. And then last but not least, there's an, there's an update coming to the Nest, which we haven't seen, to me, a real update for the Nest thermostat in quite some time. And I actually had to, unfortunately, I need to actually box it up and return it. I had to take my Nest Protect down. Um, but the Nest thermostat, they're giving it a UI improvement. It seems like they're it's it's interesting. They're changing the the kind of single single ad, ad, adjust the temperature interface, and they're giving you the ability to check the temperature outside. Um, they're they're doing a lot more with it, so I'm I'm excited. I, I actually checked when I got home. My device had not updated yet, mm -hmm. um, but I am awaiting that update. For my nest looks nice looks i'm still i'm still considering this this is on the uh, be nice be nice list i need to do the thing where i where i send the picture and find out if, if my my setup here is even compatible with it i'm sure your i'm guessing yours would be if mine is mm -hmm. i can't imagine yours isn't. Yeah, i'm still on the old school steam based heat furnace huge radiators You've seen the beast that I have. You got a tip of the week again from the big G, it looks like. Yeah, um, it's the thing that might actually keep me on Chrome. One of the things that I've been having an issue with with Chrome, not only is it a battery hog and not 64-bit on Mac OS, um, they came out with a new bookmark manager that actually works really well. Um, and thank you, because I, I, I saw a thing about this, and then I never found the link again to, to figure out how to install it. <laughs> And it's right in the it's right in the Chrome plugin store or whatever you want to call it. Um, installed right away, it was easy to use. Obviously, then synced across all my devices. Um, I really I really like it. Um, it's going to be it's going to help me with managing to me in a in a more modern interface um, for bookmark management. I really was not happy with with their their default bookmark manager um the other thing that they do is obviously in google fashion you can auto your folders um and it will 
kind of automatically organize them in different views. Oh, so like you can like uh, like start you you start all your links, and it, it like much like Gmail does now, or or a, a Google Inbox is doing, it's gonna funnel you'll know, look at and funnel it into these categories. Yes, that seems like because like the stuff I'm gonna link is gonna just drop in the two categories. It feels. Like to me, it's like you're going to have a tech category. You're going to have a sports category for all the wrestling stuff. That's it. Well, look, mine went to for to Android blog, Firefox, um, iPhone geek, wallpaper. So I don't know. I got a lot more than just like that nice. high level tech. I actually I, broke it. To me, it seems to have broken it down to another layer. Mm hmm. I've loaded. It, I just loaded here on my on my MacBook here, and it is kind of nice. Like it is, like it's it's a little more animated to it. It is a little more visual way for me to look at what's going on. It's got my folders that I've already kind of kind of worked out here. Um, like, yeah, I kind of like the more visual. But not everything though has like um, anything visual to show. Like not everything is pulling photos. You know, when I think that's something. Here. No, no. I think it depends on the website. It's almost like the issue we ran into back when we were trying to use Flipboard. Mm -hmm. When it seems like it's trying to pull something from there if it can, but if it can't, yeah, I mean, ideally, kind of it should be pulling kind of a featured image, right? Um, because if you're in WordPress right. or if you're on, on Squarespace or something, it says these, this is the featured image. This is like the image that should show up. If you put this link, like in Facebook and it wants an image, here's the image it should show. Right. Um, mm -hmm. and that doesn't always work. Like, why is this, uh, yeah, like, why is it, why are these, a couple of these pulling low res versions of images, like super, super low res versions of images, but, but the majority of them are just colored backgrounds so at least there's like something nice there when there's when sites aren't playing nice but the, the sites that are playing that just doesn't look good so i don't know and, and I, I you could i like it because you can add descriptions to your folders you can mm -hmm. i haven't i haven't figured out why the button's gray um but there's actually an ability to, oh please wait while we save your folder to the server um so you can share a folder hmm. So if you have bookmarks, that you want oh, to share. That could be people. nice. So that that could be nice for um because I'm, I'm I'm trying to look for ways for uh, like other people to kind of pitch in for the podcast and say oh this is how you do it, da 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 da. So like I go through a series of okay we gotta go to this site go to this site go to this site upload or update or you know whatever it is. It'll be nice to be like here here's this and oh hey we're adding things to Spreaker now for instance right here's a link to this you know. Um, like that, that could be an interesting project management kind of thinking. So I like it. I, I like, it. I want to play with this obviously, a little bit. Obviously in, in good old Google fashion, they have a very nice search feature. So mm -hmm. if you don't remember what folder or where you put something, um, you can obviously search all your bookmarks, not just by name and URL, but I think by some of the content. And you know, I um, always have the problem that I bookmark something like sometimes I'll go through there and I bookmark something like ages ago. Oh yeah. This is something I want to check out and get back to. Never do. Never do. Mm -hmm. I use Delicious for the longest time. I use Pocket. I've never, like, I have a item to, like, hey, go see what's in your pocket. I don't have time to sit down and read that long Polygon or Verge article that I wanted to read, like, three weeks ago. You know? Um, th this is kind of a, a, a personal management problem for me, I guess, is the, well, I marked the thing because I can put it out of my mind now so I can get back to that thing I was getting to. And now it's, like, it's 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 in a storage, you know? It's like my it's my personal storage, and there's going to be a storage wars on my bookmark somewhere along the line. It, I actually use Pocket primarily, actually, for curating content for this show. Mm -hmm. so that, that's my primary yeah. entries for Pocket are. Oh, this would this would go good on AwesomeCast. I, I don't want to bookmark it here because maybe it's not going to show up over there. Yeah, or I'll just end up losing it. So that's that's where I'm using Pocket. I'm using it to curate content for different tasks. Yeah, and, I almost expect. And I'm already I'm already tweeting that stuff out because I want to put it out on Twitter and Facebook and see if anybody else has any commentary that maybe we want to include. Not that we get a lot of it, but um, but 
you know, I, I, I feel like it's like, hey, this is something that we're interested in. You know, hey, this is something we're interested in. For anybody that follows the podcast account, you'd be like, hey, this is what's on our mind, you know, um, versus and, and, and I do use it to kind of uh, curate. I'm curating a little bit of research for a documentary project. Um, for instance, it's been really kind of nice for that, too. So, but awesome. Awesome. All right. On that note, uh, we'll get some more uh, news stories and, and other little uh, some some fun stuff. Some fun stuff. Nintendo wants to watch you sleep for science, for instance. Uh, so we're going <laughs> to touch on what's going on there and some other stuff going on from uh, some locals. Um, I need to move to a different part of the dock. But in the meantime, hey, guys, go check out SliceOnBroadway.com. These guys have been supporting us for several months now. Chill, you're missing it tonight. You're missing it, but that's okay because then we it, it, tonight it's been birthday pizza for Missy. She's over there. Hi, mm-hmm. Missy. She's on the couch. She's waving at me. It's her birthday. Everybody say happy birthday, happy Missy. Birthday. Tell her on the Twitter. Is she, happy... she eating birthday pizza? She's eating. She was eating birthday. Oh wait, what's that? What's that? I was eating birthday pizza. Now I'm eating birthday timbits. Birthday timbits. Birthday pizza. She has her birthday balloon. But she has birthday. She has a birthday puppy. And a birthday um, kitty, and, a birthday kitty. and uh, so she's she's doing good. But 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 part of part of all of that is from our friends at Slice on Broadway. <laughs> See, bring it back around, right? Um, they're a, a great join up here in the South Hills of Pittsburgh in Beach View, uh, right along the tracks, along the T line. If you if you commute on the T, you're already passing it every day. Get off that T and have some pizza. And it, the tea stops right there. Uh, the tea stops right there. Like it's right in front of the building, directly in front of the building. You can't miss it. Um, and they have a second location over at Carnegie PA. Uh, you can see that see that uh, exit right over there on the parkway. Uh, if you're heading out to the airport or anything. Down on Main Street, great gourmet pizza. Oh, my God, look at that. We, we only get a pepperoni pizza here on Tuesdays. But, man, those Supremes, uh, the Gonzo. All kinds of great stuff. Follow their. Uh, apparently, it's Daddy's Day. It was Daddy's Day off day, and they're having the kids make the pizza the other day on Instagram. So go check that out on Facebook, on Twitter. Let them know the awesome cast sent you. Let them know you heard about it on the awesome cast, and you wish you were in Pittsburgh. Uh, if we're making you hungry with these images, no, that's just the front of the thing. It's gonna come back around. It's okay. There it is. There it is. Look at it. Get hungry if you're on the video. Or imagine that you're on the video and go on SliceOnBroadway.com if you're, unless you're driving. If you're driving and listening on Stitcher, don't, don't just wait for later. Just It can wait. It's okay. Uh, but please do it. Um, so go check them out. SliceOnBroadway.com So we got a lot of other stuff going on here. Uh, like I said, Nintendo's in the news. We actually got a little bit of video game news. More, We're going to get on the tech side of it. The guys over on Boss Battle can talk about it if they want to. Uh, but right now for instance uh, nintendo like i said wants to watch you sleep for science you know we had uh some news they, they announced actually oddly at e3 that they were going to have was it a sleep monitor or a pedometer i think it was actually um that, that they had originally talked about so i don't know i haven't i haven't dove, dove much into this but but some of the conversation about nintendo um really kind of reaching out to a, definitely a different market, right? Um, Nintendo's notoriously kind of described themselves as a toy company uh, with their characters, with their video games. And that's why, you know, one of the reasons where they kind of, you know, very bullish on we're not going to get rid of our, our, our console business. But uh, they, they're, they're, they're uh, going to be putting out a forthcoming quality of life sensor meant to sit next to the user's bed during sleep. Overnight, the product will visually record movements of your body, breathing, and heartbeat, then upload resulting data to Nintendo's cloud servers so that a corresponding app can analyze your sleep and offer suggestions for better rest in the future. This is, so they're taking on Fitbit, Apple, you know, everything in this. In this Is this just like Nintendo kind of um, reaching out beyond video games? Maybe they're realizing maybe they should try a different industry. They are a bit of a technology company on top of video games, right? Yeah, I'm, I don't, I would rather have something measuring my movements that's on my wrist than sending out some kind of gamma radiation 
to monitor my sleep stats. And gamma radiation is not serious, but it's radio frequency sensor. I, I don't know. And, and why? <laughs> like, I, I, I understand that, yes, they probably should branch out. This would not be where I would go. With. It's a surprising way. Um, I mean, they're, they're they're actually partnered with uh, other medical device firms like ResMed um, on this project. Uh, they also explained why they explained why the Weave Vitality sensor, which I think is the thing I was remembering from from E three, never made it to market. They said that the you know, the you know health companion device like this uh you know they work better when users didn't have to wear touch or operate them so they're taking another view at this you know mm-hmm. we talk about wearable computers and, and they're getting all this data that we get to you know put on our phones but they're saying it doesn't work how many times have you heard somebody say yeah i forget to put my fitbit on i know i've heard it from from a few people uh in our circles you know uh, mm-hmm. that's why i mean for me i think it's it's nice when you have that wrist one that can just be there, you know, and doesn't need charged every night. Like the Fitbit that, 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 that Missy has, like, like she has it on all the time, you know, versus when we're looking at these Apple watches and these other ones that do even uh, ever get the, the Microsoft band. I think that they, they said you can wear for 48 hours. That still seems like too much. Yeah. Or you were saying it seems like too much or not enough. Are you, are you four days? Mm-hmm. Let me say she can wear hers for four days. No, I'm saying it's not enough because it, it, the more the more the more times that you have to take that thing off, put it on a charger overnight, especially if it's something that's supposed to uh, uh, take a look at your sleep. Um, that's that's more chances that you're not going to put it back on and, and continue to participate in that data collection. That that's, I would agree with that. So I mean, and that's why I think like. Like taking your Apple Watch off at the end of the day, putting on a thing. I don't. I don't know. But then again, I'm not a watch person. You know. Uh, I, I almost feel like those devices should have some kind of lightweight, long tether where I could plug it in while it's on my wrist while I'm at my desk. Mm-hmm. Like some kind of high speed, quick charge. Which we know is out there. Right? Motorola is doing it. Samsung's doing it. Apple's doing it. Uh, a high speed, higher, higher rate charge where I could say it charges in a half an hour. We all probably sit at least at the desk for a half an hour a day or primarily the people that use those technologies um, where it would not necessarily get in the way of typing or something of that nature where, where you could quickly charge it. Um, that's where I would see. Yeah, I, I just I agree with you. But, um, charging it overnight. While trying to, is obviously you're going to lose all that sleep data. Um, I, I just don't know. Like maybe maybe one day they'll get to the point where they came out with a vitality vitality sensor and a sleep sensor. You, you can't play Wii until you have enough sleep and you moved around enough. Wow. Um, all right, we got a couple other things here. Uh, let's talk. Oh, oh, okay. First, I I had. I kind of got a got a kick out of this. This is a Indiegogo. Um, I only got twenty five days left. I could do something, but it's called faux glass. It's for all those people that don't want their Google Glass, but they do want to kind of look cool. You can. Oh, I'm on the wrong thing. I'm, I'm on the wrong computer. I'm sorry. Um, but here, I'll pull up the video. Uh, it's 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 a good bit cheaper. It it, it the looks a little bit like a uh, Google Glass. If you just had uh, multiple uh, colored lights on it, uh, so if you it, that's it, it's kind of a joke. Um, but apparently, they are doing a full-on uh, Indiegogo for this as well, so you can go check it out uh, over there. And it's F A U X glass. So let's say only I did say only twenty dollars. I think. Yes, and they're at 856 of their $5,000. And they got some tremendous cool. videos of, <laughs> of people wearing them. It just lights up. That's it. You want to look awkward. I if you wanted to use it as part of a costume or something I and not have the real thing, I, I it's rather humorous. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, well. Um, so, yeah, you can check that out. 
Um, we also have you have. Well, we have new Fitbits. No, that wasn't yours. Um, so I, they, they, this, we had a year ago. They had the uh, Fitbit Force, I believe it was Flex Force, and there was a Force, and they were the ones that uh, everybody had a problem with the bands. And that was it really, there was nickel in them or something. Yeah, there was something like that. Yeah, um, I'm actually having trouble with the link. Oh, there they are. Um, so we have a new one. The new ones uh, coming out. Uh, these ones actually, I, I think they started doing a little bit with the with the ones last year. But these ones actually have the time. They have a little more readout display. Um, you get they're the Fitbit charges, um, and you get you get notifications actually from your phone. Um, notifications, as in like you get texts and calls. And I don't think it goes too much further out from that um also i think gps is in these ones uh as well as elevation so it's not just like you stepped you know it can tell you stepped up you're climbing a hill you're climbing stairs you know something like that um this is a hundred and i think forty dollar device uh, we were kind of discussing it here and my kind of question was why would you snag something like this uh I, I don't know. I guess it's kind of more on on the fitness wise. But why would you get something like this that does the fitness plus the notifications when you have Apple Watch coming next year? So, so you as an Apple user, uh, I, I, different price point to me. Okay, one hundred thirty. One hundred thirty. That's true. Right now, one hundred and fifty next year, which is even lower, cheaper than the Microsoft band. Mm -hmm. The other thing that where I think they've started to to crack the the battery problems with these devices there i think is it seven days or full week yeah, full week same. yeah they're yeah. saying full week on the new one so i i mean to me those are two things that you're not gonna get out of both the microsoft or or apple they're, watch they're or. very different very different devices then then my other question was like, what are you going to do? Like, wear your Fitbit alongside an Apple Watch? Because you're going to get different things out of each of them. You're wearing the Apple Watch because you want to interface with notifications, etc. You're going to wear your uh, Fitbit because you want Fitbit type things. Missy has a comment. I don't really have a mic on you, but you're over there. I'm over here. Yeah. Um, my, my comment is pretty much, I'm a Fitbit user right now. Mm -hmm. And which one do you have? I have the uh, Flex. The Flex, which is just the band. It's got a little, you know, yeah, it's, got it's, little, got, it's got a little computer. In it's there. got a little tracker that goes in it, but I can get it. I, I can shower. I can swim. I can do water activities. It's water resistant, mm -hmm. um, which I like because I can literally put it on. And the only time I take it off is when and I charge I, it. I think that's important, too, that you, you don't think about it. You can put it in the shower. Right? That Like it's raining while you're jogging. You're, you're not concerned with it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, myself. I'm excited about the the new options that they have, and I would much rather have one of those than the Apple Watch. Mm -hmm. because, as far as the fitness side, right? Yeah, because the, the fitness side on this, I love the fact that it it checks um, the the one version of it, your heart rate. Mm -hmm. um, so you have your heart rate, you have your um, you know basic information. It does the elevation, so it's it's more of a a health tracker. I don't need to have something to have my notifications because I don't use technology the same way that other people do. Um, like I'm sitting there at work. I have my phone plugged in at my desk computer. So it's like literally sitting there in front of me. If somebody's texting me, you know, I, I can get a chance to check texts throughout the day periodically, but it's not something that I am actively involved with throughout the day. I don't need that. Plus for the price point, I would much rather pay, you know, $150 for for this than three hundred dollars for a watch there is a watch I, I didn't realize this there is a watch ish version that is coming out from them well um, i think that's the one that has the the heart rate monitor in it, is it? yeah i think they call that, it the that, that's just like a 250 price point but still i mean you're still it's you're still bad. well under what we're probably going to be seeing as an as an apple watch yeah, and a little more than what you're seeing out of Pebble or a Google Watch. But and, the, and and the point is, it looks like to me, it seems like it's a Pebble type thing, and but added on the specialty of the um, um, fitness. 
you know, mm-hmm. like, like they've, they've perfected the fitness versus a lot of other people. You know, uh, I don't think anything Apple puts out fitness wise is going to probably match something Fitbit does for instance. But, um, but yeah, that is, so, so they're working, they're working the other way, you know, they're working from, we're good at the fitness thing and we're working over to the, and you'll get notifications as a smartwatch, da, 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 versus, uh, Apple is working from there. We're really good at the mobile, mobile, you know, uh, now we're going to make it a watch and it's going to interface with this thing. And there's some fitness stuff on there. You might want to wait a uh, iteration or two before you're really, really depending on that fitness, you know, or, or it's a, it says here too, they've, they've cracked the the issue or they've unlocked the secret to automatic sleep tracking. Ooh. These are remembering to tell your Fitbit when, when it's bedtime or over. So they must've figured out ways to automate that process and figure out based on time, maybe time of day, motion, movement. Then you have, uh, then you have things. Versus a horizontal. Then you have things like what was, what was uh, introduced this week, like the Microsoft band. Uh, which I don't think anybody wants this. Um, Achachi, you Cross talk- wants it. What's that? Cross wants uh, it. And I, saw some, I saw some people that I'm Facebook friends with. Get it. They Pick look it interesting, up. but again, like you know, Chachi talked about the idea of putting a glass, you know, putting a screen in his in his in his arm. Looking at uh, some of this, this it kind of looks like that. Looking at the the inside of this girl's arm, like that, like that could be it. Like there's your wrist, you know, and there you have your you have your notes in there and. It does interface with uh, looks like every phone, you know, every major smartphone, which is kind of nice. Microsoft's smart about that. They're not saying, "Hey, you have to use a Microsoft phone that nobody has." You know, mm-hmm. um, I know there. I know there's more and more, and, and I think I think uh, honestly, I think Microsoft phone is going to become. Give it another couple of years. Um, they're not going to be on par, but I think they're going to have a significant mind share of the audience. As um, to to me, it feels like general people uh android's too complicated um and some of them uh, apple is too and, and it feels like this this might work out better for people I, and i totally agree with that comment keeping real like, realizing that people are on it, it usually a minimum of a two-year cycle on a phone mm-hmm. uh, i'm surprised at it, the it, number of people i'm seeing leave bigger android devices for the iphone and we've seen and 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 the windows phone has gotten pretty pretty good within the last like year and a half so that cycle is about their catalog has grown by leaps and bounds in fact i put a note on here about they've recently come to an agreement with dropbox Mm -hmm. so there will be an official dropbox app they've gotten instagram recently a lot of games are launching at the same time um they now have cortana which will probably give them the cool factor um which is their their um voice activation uh type stuff so i i think i think they they can definitely make a move and i think it the, the it's not over for for anyone at this point other than blackberry yeah yeah exactly i don't know they still have security i mean consumer wise blackberry is is nowhere right, except for kim kardashian uh, buying like five <laughs> phones of a, like one they don't even make anymore. I don't think so. So, um, but good, you know, a, 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 as far as the, like, yeah, the question here, why are they integrating Dropbox when they just announced the one drive unlimited thing? It, it's just open. It's like people, they, they want people to make sure their platforms work there, you know, just so you right. don't have a reason not to get a windows phone at this point. When I, I guess I, my, my question more along the lines was, so I, I, the first article I posted was that Microsoft put direct Dropbox integration into the Office apps. Mm-hmm. So if you're using Word and, and other apps, they have directly in the app, you, have, you can add your Dropbox account and That's it'll cool. then let you um, use that as almost like a foldering system within the Office app. <laughs> Okay. Um, I wonder if that wasn't a to get out of some kind of potential collusion or with, or are we going to start hearing that that Microsoft's not being fair in a singling area companies out, or are they or are they going to purchase Dropbox? I, I find it hard to believe they uh, purchase Dropbox. They have they have they can do everything do Dropbox does. Yeah. 
at larger scale. Um, but one of the things that, did, that was talked about in another article that I read later on this afternoon after this announcement was Dropbox then announced that they were going to come out with an official app for Windows Phone. So I wonder if it was some one of these things where Microsoft says, hey, you guys, can you, can you create an app? And they said, well, we'll create an app if you put Dropbox integration and, and API calls in your office packages. So it was it was kind of both sides playing together, which I'm not. You're not seeing this out of out of Apple and Google. Um, Microsoft's trying to go everywhere. Google's a little bit trying to go everywhere that isn't a Microsoft platform, and Apple's just kind of staying in their their own garden. All right, I want to touch on one more thing uh, before we get out of here. Uh, I'll... Actually, two more things. One, hey, I visited the Microsoft kiosk at the Ross Park Mall. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was just like, this is it. <laughs> this is it. You know, I expected more. Although I finally got to play Xbox One. It's the first time I got my hands on it. And then even like the Microsoft employee was just like, hey, you want to play? I'm like, yeah, I'm down. You know, I already got a match in. I kind of knew my way around a little bit. I think he let me win, you know. Um, but it was just like, yeah, two Xboxes hooked up uh two surfaces uh, the, the phone or two around uh there were ads for the band that's it it's like i really really so i don't know like, and, and i saw there weren't many bands to be had and from what i'm hearing too there's not many surface threes to be had so wow either they didn't, they didn't create many yeah, or but it's just there. A, a lot of people were buying them. i really think they just they, they, they they're just making them to get the buzz so people start mm-hmm. looking at windows again, you know, like they, I don't think anybody's, I don't think they're going to, they're expecting to bankroll anything on surfaces or bands, but they're a thing that they're doing. Uh, like it's their version of Google's moonshots, I guess is like products, products, well, products. Me, the, the surface three to me is if I was in the, in the market for a laptop, I would seriously look at it. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, and I've been comparing it. The price points I've been high. trying to compare it to like a Mac, uh, MacBook Air to see like you know what's the better option between the two of these. But hey, one more thing, um, Internet Archive. I love the thing. You can go check out if you made a website ten years ago. And you're kind of curious and go back there. I found my website from like 2001. I, I tweeted it last week. Um, if you could pop in there, I think it was under SirPsychoSexy.net. Have fun, kids. Um, there's a reason I didn't stay with design. Uh, but <laughs> if you go there, this is a story that's been going around. And I actually stumbled on it. I don't know what, how I found this. Um, but I have Chachi, and I think I think he said he already knew about this. But if you go on there, there's a lot of video games on there. Um, and I think we looked at an early version of like this JavaScript emulator that they're starting to put a couple of things in there. Um and uh, now there has been going around about their ni- over 900 classic arcade games that you can play online, JavaScript emulator, I believe. Um, and and it's, it's a lot of stuff. Like there's like Pac-Man, there's Sega games in there. Uh, Street Fighter 2 is a part of this. Um, Star Trek is a game in here. This is awesome. Uh, Internet Archive, it, it, it's pretty cool because you can go in there and actually find a lot of uh, open source, not open source, but public domain stuff. Um, if you're a podcaster, you can put your podcast in there. And now your podcast is being stored somewhere that should be perpetually, you know, uh, uh, kind of go on. We found old uh, public domain, uh, uh, you know, steel mill footage when we were looking at stuff at the old job. Uh, but and now video games um, seem to work pretty okay. Um, and they say, you know, if you have any, you know, you know, any glitches or anything, let them know. Of course, there is uh, a lot of other old software in here. Like, uh, just look at the the, the page for software. Um, I was having fun kind of poking around here, and they actually have uh, let's see, old school emulation center. So that's like you know the the games and stuff they're talking about. Um, they have cataloged over 450,000 different software images and sets consisting of over three terabytes of software, firmware, and resources. That's it. But that's a lot of floppies. It's a whole lot of floppies. Mm. The CD are old games like Paperboy Mm -hmm. and Outrun. 
things uh, that things that we're not talking are heavy video. They're, exactly. I mean, they're, they're side scrollers and exactly. a lot of repetitive Jeez. type data. Yeah. I mean, a lot of these games I want to go play. I mean, even old Atari games, Kung Fu Master, I remember playing mm-hmm. the pizza shop, waiting mm-hmm. for pizzas. Uh, so the uh, CD archive collecting thousands of shareware and cover CD-ROMs uh, from the heyday of CD-ROM, late 1980s to mid-2000s. Uh, provides ISO images as well as links inside these collections of software. That's awesome. So you can go get like the original knee-deep in the dead shareware doom, for instance, on here. Um, to do what? I don't know. Oh, you, you almost need a DOS emulator in order for that to work, too. They have so much cool stuff on here. Uh, so go check that out. If you go to uh, archive.org, there's the Internet Archive right across the top of their sparsely designed uh, uh, site. Uh, let's see. If I can go, the Three Stooges is the top one here. Uh, let's see if I can load that up on this, this kind of older computer here. So you pop in here, and uh, they got a little kind of display. Oh, this looks like an exciting game. Uh, you hit Run for in-browser emulation. We'll see if this browser is updated enough to do that. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, maybe. I should have preloaded this, huh? Uh, because it's basically has to download the game. Not that these games are really that big in the long run. So, oh, here you go. And it's actually kind of running like a version of MAME. Hit space. It's fetching the BIOS. Loading it up. You can go, you can go full screen. Not that that always has really great results, it seems. But, uh, yeah, you could lose a lot of time on this, probably. I wonder if they have those, like, old Ninja Turtles. And I got the Three Stooges! There you go. They returned the Jedi from the Atari. I mean, it's, this could be hours Ooh. of wasted time. Messed that up. I pulled up help. I wasn't sure what the buttons were. Anyways, so go check that out. Archive.org. Chilla! We got some stuff uh, coming up here. I know... Uh, Dutter's just signed up for the fourth annual startup job fair that's coming up on November 20th. Um, and if you want more information, uh, go to meetup.com and, uh, look up the fourth annual startup job fair here in Pittsburgh over at Carnegie Mellon University. So if you want a cool job with some cool startups, uh, that'll be a good place to start. Um... Also, I think I got some other stuff here. Uh, Life Shell, I think they're still kicking on Kickstarter, or at least they're close to. No, oh, never mind. They're not around anymore. Uh, you jagoff.com. Uh, you go over there, uh, sign up for the position to get Jagoff into the Webster's Dictionary so you can finally use it in that Words with Friends game that you've been playing. Um, so, uh, you jagoff.com. And of course, PodCamp Pittsburgh. PodCampPittsburgh.com uh, coming up November 22nd through 23rd. It's free. It's about social media. It's about podcasting. Um, it'll be streamed live live online as well. Um, do we do we announce our keynote? Not officially yet. Not officially. You'll like them. You'll like them. Um, also, Wireless Warrington is doing their launch party with MetaMesh November 13th. Remember, we talked about them when Josh Lucas was in here from the hardware store. And uh, again, go look up hashtag wireless Warrington if you're interested in that, if uh, you're around the Pittsburgh area over at meetup.com. Uh, Chilla, do you have anything you want to bring up before we get out of here? Um, Apple will be releasing a new OS soon based on their beta launch today. Yeah. And HomeKit, keep your eyes out for that because chips, wireless chips began shipping to manufacturers. So nice. Wonder if it'll, I wonder if we'll see some hidden hidden items before Christmas. Thanks. That's all I have. All righty. Uh, with that, hey, guys, thanks for joining us. Uh, you can find out more, find out all past episodes, find out links that we like over at awesomecast.net. You can still click on Extra Life and donate to that. Go check out uh, that in the live stream, or the, 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 the time lapse of the 24-hour stream we did uh, for, for Extra Life for St. Vincent's. Children's Hospital up in Erie, PA. You can also follow us on the Twitters at, at AwesomeCast. Find AwesomeCast on Google Plus, on Facebook. Um, you can also thank Missy Sorg. It's her birthday and she still did notes for us to fill in. 
At she's Re- awesome. At Rebellious Flaw on the Twitters. Thank you for that. She's been tweeting it all night. Thank you for everybody joining us in the chat room tonight, uh, including Buddy, Juggalo John, Brother Sorg, Hot Wheels, Mad Mike, and yes, even you, Chachi, over at live.sorgatronmedia.com. You can drop in there about 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time on Tuesday nights. Uh, we could be wrapping up talking about movies. We could be starting off on time. It goes either way. We're actually running a little late into the video game show right now, but we'll work on that. Um... And you can also subscribe to us. Look for the Awesome Cast on iTunes, on uh, uh, Spreaker, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and of course YouTube as well. Uh, so you don't miss an episode and, and help other people find it just from participating. Uh, so with that, after we've talked about all of the Google, at Chilla on the Twitters. That's me. That's him. That's where I'll be. Hit him up. Don't follow along. If you want to talk about the Google or the Microsoft, and I'm at Sorgatron. As well, Sorgatron.com is the blog. I got a daily, uh, daily-ish podcast. I didn't do one this morning because I was traveling. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to my, my five listeners. I'm sorry. Uh, so, with that, thank you to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Do you like professional wrestling? Want your discussions? No holds barred. Check out wrestlingmayhemshow.com for all the wrestling podcast flavor you can handle.